Welcome to Tarot and Beyond. Today we're doing another pick a card reading and this time we are going to be looking into what new relationships are coming in for you. So I have three piles here in front of me. Pile number one has traditional rose quartz, pile number two has a light rose quartz, and pile number three has an aqua aura rose quartz. So choose the pile or multiple piles that resonate with you or that feel as though they are calling to you and jump ahead using the time stamps down below in the description box or pinned in the comment section to your reading. Enjoy! Hi pile number one, if you chose this pile let's go ahead and take a look at what cards are coming up for you in regard to any new romances that may be coming in at this time. All right, so you have calling in your soulmate, your prayers, affirmations, and visualizations to help bring you together. I'm going to save the tarot cards from the Tarot of Love until after. You have no place like home. Success. And Samaritan, the light attributes are refines your capacity to help those you would prefer to ignore. And the shadow attribute is exacting appreciation and recognition for the help that you offer. And your tarot cards you have are the Eight of Lightnings, which is the Eight of Swords, the Four of Blossoms, which is the Four of Cups, The Seven of Rods, which is the Seven of Wands. And the Four of Nuggets. So, pile number one, what I see is that you are calling in your soulmate right now. That is very obvious here in the reading. The aspect of this that I'm being called towards is that this person is someone that feels like home to you and that you will recognize immediately. And that's essentially what soulmates are. They're souls that we've had connections with in the past. Ideally, the higher expression of a soulmate is one whom we love very deeply and we're connected by that bond of love through the heart so that our souls continue to reincarnate together either here on earth or throughout the galaxy. So what I do see here is that this person is very, very loving. They may be on a spiritual journey of some kind to free themselves from limitation or lack, and you may be doing the exact same thing. So I have a feeling coming through here that the two of you are going to come together around something that is creating stability for you. No place like home, the four of nuggets and the four of blossoms are all speaking to me of something that feels like home to you maybe it's a place that you go that brings you comfort or maybe it's your literal home um, I just heard in my head homecoming so if you have a homecoming coming up and you're meaning to go to that perhaps you will meet that person there or maybe it's somebody from your past but I do see that this person definitely feels like home to you and there's an instant connection whether it's an old relationship or a new one I also see you coming together in a setting that is very comforting. So that's kind of that message that they keep bring, bringing through to me is that you are doing something on a spiritual journey of some kind. So maybe you're going to a retreat because I do see that there's kind of like a pathway here in the seven of rods that's leading to this star. And there's these two kind of silhouettes which are reminding me of people and it looks like they're sort of on either sides of a chasm which feels very much like this eight of lightnings it's like a big chasm in the middle so this is the eight of swords which is limiting beliefs and self-restriction not being able to see things clearly uh, because the mind is getting in the way so you may be going to a retreat to get the mind out of the way or going somewhere that feels comforting for you on some kind of a journey. And it doesn't have to be spiritual in nature, but that's what I'm specifically picking up on here. That's leading you to your destiny. So it's quite literally leading you to the star, which is your destiny. 
I'm seeing this image here in the Four of Blossoms, almost like a white picket fence. So again, it feels very much like this person is like the quintessential comfort of home that you've been seeking, whether it's a feeling that you have when you're with them, or whether this is somebody that you're going to actually build a home with and move in together or buy a home together and create that feeling of comfort and safety and connection through that relationship and the building of that home. I do see this being very successful. So whatever this relationship is bringing in for you, it is bringing something good. And it, it does look like this person is a very giving person. They are uh, very open hearted and possibly even spiritually aware or enlightened. And so they, they are always looking to serve others in some way. They're looking to help others and they don't like to ignore if there are issues that need to be addressed. So they're the person who really takes things head on and is willing to see the truth and speak the truth and to help those in need. This could also be something that you're doing together. So it could be um, that you meet this person at some kind of an event where you're going to help the needy or you're going for like a charity uh, fundraiser or maybe it's like a volunteer type of thing where I just heard building homes. So maybe you quite literally are going to build homes in communities that are um, lower income or first world countries or something like that, or sorry, third world countries or something like that. Obviously, that's not going to apply to everyone, but that's the energetic signature that I'm getting from these cards, from this reading and from this person as well. So this charitable nature, this spirit and willingness to give, and this really quest, it's like a heart quest to find meaning in life or to create meaning in life. And I do see that this is what both of you are resonating at and that's why this frequency draws you back together. Yeah, they're really drawing my attention to the fact that these two both have these white sort of fences in them. So again, it's that same message of it feels like home. Um, this could also represent a barrier that you two have to cross because there does appear to be a long journey here that is fraught with many of these wands or obstacles. There may be boundaries that you need to cross to meet each other. So perhaps you need to travel to meet this person or maybe they live at a distance from you or possibly in another state, province or country. So there's these boundaries that lay in between, but I do see them opening up and creating connection despite uh, anything that is standing in your way. It's like this, it feels like it's hard to get to. It's reminding me here of like the house and up when it's very, very out of reach and it feels out of reach, but really it's not. And that's why you're being called towards it. So being intentional, um, calling in your soulmate with intention resonating at that frequency while at the same time focusing on removing any limitations from within yourself within your heart and being in service to others or being in a position where your focus is on that unity is on love it is on that connection to other people and not necessarily what you can give, but the sense of stability that that creates within you, the sense of groundedness, knowing that you're connected to everything and that everything is love. That's the frequency of this soulmate. And so embodying that for yourself is going to make this journey up to this home a lot easier. You know, the home here in No Place Like Home is also reminding me of two things. Number one is a lantern that is held by the hermit. So this does feel like an inner quest, which is what I was getting from that Seven of Wands as well. But it also reminds me of the quote from... Wizard of Oz, there's no place like home. So it's almost as though you have to go on this long journey to find your way back home, even though you had the power the whole time, but didn't realize it. It was within you the entire time, but this journey led you through these different lessons and challenges that allowed you to realize and accept your own power and be able to use that responsibly. 
So I do see that the two of you individually are both very spiritually powerful people. You have high vibrations and you've gotten there by addressing any of the limiting thought patterns or subconscious belief sets and programs that you had coming into this lifetime. I do see that you've done a lot of past life work on your own, but you will also be doing some of that together. So anything that is left unresolved up until the point of meeting is going to be inevitably resolved when you two do come together into union. That being said, it's not going to be something hard here. I mean, there may be some challenges to it, but I do see that it will be very successful and that you are being very supported as you move through the finalization of some of that karma. And I don't even think that it's karma between you two. Like I wouldn't say that this is a negative soulmate contract or some kind of a karmic situation. I would say that this is actually somebody who is a frequency match to that higher timeline, elevated to the frequency of the ascension or to the frequency of spiritual embodiment and responsibility and God's sovereignty. So any karma that does come up when you two meet meet or as you are getting into the relationship is not something that's between you two. It's just that the frequency of both of you is so high that it will draw any latent karma to the surface that you have within yourselves. So that's what I'm seeing with that. Now, it may feel a little bit challenging and there may be a little bit more work to do with that, but I do see that this is kind of what draws you together in the first place. And so maybe that's how this all plays together is that you're looking to clear karma or you're looking to do an aligned service of some kind. And so because of that, you guys end up coming into contact with one another. I see that this is a very divinely guided relationship and it is romantic. So there is romantic connection here. There is a sense of belonging with one another. I wouldn't necessarily say that, you know, this is the energy of, oh, this is my other half. But there is balance here for sure. And that balance creates that stability, which is why it feels so safe and comfortable and like home. I see that this is also something that you may have like sort of opposite qualities to you with these people facing in different directions. It's like the yin and yang. So it could be masculine and feminine, depending on whether you resonate with those frequencies or which side of that equation you fall on. But ideally, um, it's a masculine and a feminine polarity that come together to create that balance. So I do see that that balance is very equal between you two. Yeah, they keep showing me that there may be challenges here. There may be kind of red tape that you need to cross for this relationship. There may be things that kind of get in the way. They're, they're showing me the lines in this card here. Hold on, I'll show you. You see these very fine lines. They almost look like, you know, like lasers um, in a museum where they're set for security and you have to like dodge through them to not get caught. That's kind of what it feels like here is an obstacle course or some kind of um, um, barriers for security that are in place that you two will kind of have to creatively swing through. And this will be a team effort. So again, that, that feeling of being at a distance or having, you know, boundaries between you in some way is coming up and it, I'm feeling it very physically. So it could be, you know, uh, that this person is from a different country. And so one of you has to get some kind of a, um, a visa or a green card or something like that so that you can see each other or be with each other. Um, there could be restrictions around the, the home situation, maybe it's hard for you to get to where they are or vice versa. Or this could be more um, emotional, like there are boundaries between you that some of these old karmic patterns are bringing up or some of these self-restrictions in the mental space are causing between you initially and you kind of have to work to get around those without setting each other off um, and creating disconnection. So I don't see it as like walking on eggshells type of energy. It's quite the opposite. It's more so like you're navigating those triggers together and finding a way to get through them so that neither of you gets hurt in the process, which is really cool. I do see that this could be a distance off, so it may not be coming right away. It does feel like it's off in the distance a little bit with these two cards, both the heart in the background rather than the foreground, and then the star is 
off at the end of this journey as well. So I do see that you two are probably in separation right now and you may or may not have met in this lifetime at this point and that essentially your meeting will be further off in the distance in time. So this could be a couple of years from now even. Um, now timing is always malleable when it comes to energy and readings so don't take that one literally just put it in your back pocket and if it resonates or if it ends up playing out that way then well there you go but you won't really know until you get to the other side will you until you get to the end of that journey yeah this is a very elevated romance but it will require you to change it will require you to move outside of your comfort zone um, and it may be something that you haven't experienced before i also see that the number five here in no place like home is really drawing my attention so again this speaks to travel number five is change and movement and so it this is very much feeling like somebody who lives at a distance from you or whose home is far away um, and you meet them in some kind of a situation where there's some restrictions between you that need to be crossed but you will be successful at that. Again, the success energy is right here. So any any limitations or restrictions or any kind of blocks that appear to be impeding this relationship's progress or connection will be resolved successfully. I see a lot of growth with this person and yourself. So you're creating a lot of stability together. And through that stability, you're able to both grow individually more than you would independently, which is really cool. Because I think a lot of the time we, we can get into the idea that I'm better off alone because I can focus on me and I can focus on my growth. But if that's the case for you and you found yourself thinking that way, I do see that this partner is actually going to help propel you into more growth than you would have alone. The other aspect of that is that if you've had relationships in the past that hindered your growth or that caused you to be worse off than you started out, uh, this is not that type of relationship. So again, this does feel like it's a little bit outside of the comfort zone in one way or another, but it is an answer to your prayers. It is an answer to that heartfelt call, and it is the frequency that you are embodying and the actions that you are taking that bring you two together in a really significant way. So using your prayers and affirmations and visualizations and intentions very directly is actually going to help propel or rather magnetize you two together in some way. I do see um, like rivers. I do see a, a lot of water moving through a lot of these cards. So this could be somewhere where there's a river or somewhere where there is, um, could even be a creek that you connect with one another and you may spent or you may spend time there because it feels very safe it feels very calming and comforting maybe you go to this river or this particular creek to meditate together because that's the type of relationship that i'm seeing here is a very spiritually based one where both of you are on the same page and are willing to um, do that inner work both independently and together as a team this is a very lofty relationship as well, so it feels like it's very, very high up in the clouds. That's why I was mentioning that this relationship or this person feels very um, enlightened because it's a high frequency. It's a very high energy and you're looking down at the world from that vantage point, seeing the bigger picture rather than just looking at life through one subjective lens of independence. It's like you're seeing it collectively or you're raising that frequency through the energy of being a good Samaritan or being very unity consciousness focused. So this is a high frequency relationship and it's it's definitely an ascended level timeline is what I just heard in my head, ascended level timeline. It's interesting that these two cards both are kind of doing the same type of movement, like they're both sort of contorting their bodies a little bit. It makes me think of two things. Number one, it makes me think of uh, exaltation, like feeling really excited and exuberant and just kind of jumping for joy. And the other side of this feels like the energy of contortion is like having to 
having to make some necessary changes or to be adaptable to be able to fit into a situation. Now, this does not mean to change yourself. The contortion is more so around some of this red tape that we were talking about earlier, like there may be um, legal issues or there may be previous things that need to be dealt with before you can come together. So whether it's karma or whether it's a previous relationship or maybe it's um, a divorce proceeding or it's getting to see each other and having the documentation and having those be approved by law offices, those kinds of things and government. So it's that red tape that does kind of cause both of you to need to contort a little bit. But again, it's like there's this feeling of exaltation when you do come together. There's this feeling of exuberance of like, okay, yes, we did it. And that was challenging, but we made it work and it was worth it. I do also see that you two may be helping each other in some way. So as well as being drawn towards helping others, I think that the two of you both also want to help each other to, to better yourselves. And that's why I'm seeing so much growth with you two. But I do see that this person wants to come in and support you in some way. And you also want to support them. So again, it's that masculine feminine polarity. The masculine is very protective. The feminine polarity is very receptive. Um, this, the feminine polarity is very spiritually based. The masculine polarity is very doing based or action based. Now those are just frequencies. Those are not to do with male and female. Um, we all have both of those. But when I see this, this coupling or this union, what I'm seeing is that the feminine is able to go into a very feeling, peaceful, safe, receptive energy because she feels safe with this masculine or with this, with this other person. And because of that, this other person feels like they're doing a good job and they're helping because they can help this feminine to feel safe and so they're getting a sense of gratification from that while the feminine is also feeling really good and then able to help hold space emotionally and intuitively and spiritually for the masculine so it's this very beautiful harmonious reciprocal relationship and I'm loving the feeling of this yeah I see that you two are really going to be breaking through some barriers together like you are doing some major clearing work in the astral realm and you may be doing that already even though even though this relationship does feel like it's still a little ways off it's like there's a lot of astral changes going on there's astral level clearing and that's the realm the astral realm is the fourth dimension and a bit into the fifth dimension as well and it's the realm of thought and thought form and so when we go into the astral at night and we project ourselves there when we're sleeping we go into either traveling or healing or dream state and so in any of those phases of your sleep cycle you may be coming together and doing healing work and you may not consciously remember this but you may just wake up feeling as though you've just done something or been somewhere profound or you were just with someone and it felt so real and then you wake up and you kind of forget what you were dreaming about. Because I do see emphasis here on the subconscious mind, the moon here in no place like home and the eight of um, swords is also speaking of that, the eight of lightnings. So there's subconscious work that you're doing here. You're, you're really diving deep into that astral layer or that subconscious body of the mental realm being able to dive deep and then come back up for air and it's like you're you're kind of trading off to get somewhere you know it's like you dive down and then you you receive what you need from there and you come back up and then they dive down you kind of take turns and um, this really just helps each other to achieve this goal yeah it almost feels like a relay race <laughs> like um, you're passing the baton back and forth to one another and so again it's like this reciprocal very balanced harmonious yin and yang energy where you're both um, on each other's team you're both supporting one another and you're mutually growing together as well so as you support your partner and they support you you both end up winning they keep drawing my attention to the clouds in the back of no place like home and also here in the Four of Pentacles or the Four of Nuggets. So this may be somebody that, again, you've you've dreamed of. So this is somebody that you've dreamed of or you've kind of visualized in your mind that this is what you're wanting and you've kind of said like, this is the type of person that I desire. This is what I would like them to be like or what, the, what I'd like the relationship dynamics to feel like or to provide for me. And so this does feel like a dream and it may even come to you more and you might realize more 
more of this energy as you are actually daydreaming. So like set aside some time to meditate on this, to do some visualization work or some affirmations while you are in that receptive space. Because when you're when you're daydreaming um, and you're just allowing your mind to wander and to visualize and to dream and imagine, you are um, changing your brain frequency. So you're you're shifting more into theta state, which is a closer frequency bandwidth to the subconscious mind. So you are allowing yourself to tap into these much deeper, wider, larger, and higher frequencies to be able to receive information. So what you receive or what you see or what you imagine during these daydreaming sessions is actually going to be information that it might feel like it's just what you're making up, but it's not. It's information that's coming in to help you to recognize this person when you see them or when you come into contact with them. And you may not recognize them visually, but you will recognize them at the in the way that they feel. Um, the frequency, the vibration of their soul is very distinct and you recognize it right away. I keep getting a lot of goosebumps as we do this reading <laughs> pile number one. So lots of truth here, lots of profound significance. And again, this is the, the sensation that I get when truth that resonates at a very high frequency moves through my body. So that is again very very high frequency so the higher that you can get your frequency and maintain that for yourself the more likely you will be to meet this person in the physical world working on raising your vibration could be what they were saying here is incorporating more dream time or more visualization time more just allowing your mind to go into these very expansive, beautiful creations and imaginations can also be meditation. Raising your vibration can also be focusing on what you've done right. So positive affirmation for yourself to help build yourself up rather than having this eight of lightnings kind of strike you down or feel like you're limited. It's like allow your, your vision to expand, allow your dreams to guide you rather than thinking that's not realistic or, you know, I might be just fooling myself that's eight of swords energy so you're you're meant to be removing that you're meant to be working to get rid of and transcend i should say yes transcend the limitations of the mind to allow the soul to step in and magically produce this connection because it will feel very magical and very faded and it will, it will feel like it was by design. So I am getting that feeling of serendipity, like you're in the right place at the right time at the right, for the right reasons. And it's because your frequency guided you there and it was the same thing for them. And so it was a match and energetically, it's just a perfect fit. <laughs> That's beautiful. You know, I also see that this person, because they are so high vibrational, may also be very successful. So they could be somebody who's very financially abundant or who has a really nice home. They could be somebody who lives kind of far out from society, like maybe they live up on a hilltop somewhere or in like a private community or maybe on an acreage. And they, they can do that because first of all, it's like that hermit energy that I was seeing in No Place Like Home, but also because they have the money to be able to live a little bit further out and to travel when they need to. Yeah, I do see that this person's very good with money. Um, they are very stable. They have a lot in their savings and they're good with uh, business as well. So they might be a business person, uh, but it's a very spiritually aligned business, one that helps people. Yeah, they like to help bring people together. So their business might be about um, like building communities or building homes. Maybe they're a contractor or a designer or an architect or something like that. Or maybe they are um, somebody who helps to heal people and they bring them together on these retreats or they bring them to these locations. Maybe they're like a travel guide or something like that. They like to help people and they like to bring people together is what I'm seeing. And I just heard from all walks of life. So yeah, they, there's no discrimination. They welcome everyone into whatever this business is that they're doing or whatever it is that they're doing in terms of this side project or this this hobby or this um, this passion project that they have. They, they welcome everyone, all age groups, all races, all genders. They're just like, come on in, guys. You're all welcome here because it's all about love. It's all about connection and unity. It's like, you're all my brothers and sisters. You're all welcome here. It's that kind of feeling. 
And that's created a lot of success for them. Um, although that may not be what specifically created the financial success, because I do see that some of that financial success was predating whatever this person is doing now. So they may have actually built up of their empire or built up a lot of their wealth doing something that was actually less aligned than what they're doing at the time that you meet them. So for example, they may have been a banker or they may have been in like the stock trade or like technology production or something like that. Something random that was not connected to spirituality or not connected to really humanitarian causes. Uh, But it did allow them to really exponentially grow their wealth in a short period of time. And then because of that, they were able to take that money and use it for what they actually felt passionate about. So that's actually why the soul set it up that way. It wasn't because, you know, like for some people, if they do a job that's out of alignment, they can make a lot of money, but they might not be able to retain it. So they might spend it really quickly or they might lose it in like a gambling loss or like a risky stock trade or something. But because this person was already aligned in many other ways, they set it up for themselves pre-incarnation. They were kind of like, okay, this is the general storyline of this lifetime and this is how I'm intending it to go. I'm going to set it up so that I'm called into this line of work and it's not ideal for me, but it's going to create a lot of success and opportunity for wealth and growth. And then I'm going to take that and kind of kind of like retire from that. Uh, line of work and then go into something that is much more spiritually aligned with that that soul's purpose so you know um, working with other people bringing people together compassion seems to be a really big theme for this person Um, so they may be a soul that is very divinely compassionate and all about connections and belonging and that feeling of home it's like they have this very tribal mentality where it's like all for one and one for all so they're very focused on bringing people together they're very focused on the love and the compassion and the safety between um, the human race (laughs) people from all walks of life yeah so they've really they've really used their money effectively here to to better the world and i think that that's really beautiful and you may meet them through that business like maybe you're drawn to that business because you are interested in that as well and then you find out that oh this person feels very familiar energetically or when I'm talking to them or when I'm around them I just feel at home and I feel this really strong draw but also this sense of familiarity and comfort and peace well that's because the souls of you two are first of all soulmates but also because you're a frequency match I just saw two people dancing together as well and and I do see the holding of hands here as well so you may be a lot of like physical connection and physical intimacy through like these very passionate yet soft tender gentle connections where you're sort of just like dancing together or you are very just wanting to be close together all the time because being physically connected to this person just feels very very soothing and calming for you at soul level this this person may be very healthy as well so they may focus a lot on their physical health eating very clean um, exercising regularly and i see that they may even be able to help you to do that as well so creating home within the body so actually helping to heal the body perhaps this is what they're working on um, with this project or with this new business or with their wealth maybe they've invested it into a health line or um, some some way of treating people's chronic issues with very very grounded practical care or very grounded practical nutrition or some kind of a structure or system that helps them to feel um, well again and to feel safe and at home in their body yeah this person is definitely giving me very divine compassion soul type energy so that's part of the soul blueprint that we read into in the soul realignment readings and we we take a look at what your primary energy is divine compassion is all about that tribal energy connection belonging serving people at a very fundamental level very hands-on types of healing or services that can help to create community and connection and healing for humanity for the planet for the body whatever it happens to be for that person and their focus 
yeah, it's like they're an earth angel. <laughs> it's like they've come here to to help the world. They just want to be a, of service. They just want to love people. They just want to heal people. They just want to be their authentic divine self. And I feel like that's what you in pile one are also doing. And so that's why you two are a match. All right, let me see if there's anything else that I am seeing here. You two may have been disconnected for quite a long time. If you haven't met this person yet in your life, you've been apart at soul level for quite some time. So even, you know, within the incarnational cycles that you've been on, you haven't actually come together in a physical incarnation in many lifetimes. And it's because you were both working out your karma separately. You were both working out these life lessons that you had signed up for within the game of, you know, incarnation. And so it kept you apart because the only way that you could come together was if you you both were able to transcend those things and to raise your, your frequency high, high, high up to be able to then, you know, have that clear path of connection between you, at least at soul level. Again, there may be some physical boundaries or restrictions that need to be moved through gracefully, but at the soul level, the connection and the frequency become a magnetized draw to one another when that karma is transcended. So this may very much feel like a homecoming, which was what I heard in the beginning of this reading. So the homecoming may not be literal. It could just be that this feels like a homecoming because you haven't seen each other in so long. So it's this instant recognition and it may even bring tears to your eyes because you're just overwhelmed by this feeling of, oh my God, where have you been? I missed you so much. It's been so long. You know, this isn't the type of soulmate that you, you reincarnate from incarnation to incarnation to incarnation. Um, this is one that's very, very special and unique and it was meant to be this way. Yeah, it almost feels like a reward um, for this achievement. The Four of Wands or sorry, the, that's the Four of Cups, not the Four of Wands. But I'm feeling this sense of like an achievement that it's almost like because you have succeeded in raising your frequency and maintaining that vibration by clearing the karma, removing the limitations, transcending the suffering, bringing yourself up, 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 and being of, of, of service, being in unity, being in that love frequency. It, it's like a reward almost energetically, like, okay, this is the, this is the achievement that you've unlocked is this relationship. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh, pile one. This is a really great way to start these new love readings. And this is the first love reading I've done here on this channel. So I am completely floored and just blown away by how powerful this connection is. Um, and I am wishing you so much love, blessings, and luck to continue raising your frequency and having patience and allowing yourself to explore this journey and uh, looking forward to this divine connection when it's ready to come in, when you're ready to achieve that. So I'm sending you lots of love. This is what I see for you in terms of new love. I hope that this resonates and that this person is out there for you and that you end up together in this lifetime because it does look very, very beautiful. Absolutely loving, compassionate, safe relationship. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more Pick a Card readings. And if you are looking for any karmic clearing services, I am a professional psychic medium, energy healer, and Akashic reader, and you can find all of my services down below in the description box. Thanks so much, guys. Love you, and we will see you in the next reading. Bye. Hi, pile number two. Welcome to your reading. Let's take a look at your cards. Wow, starting off strong with the wedding card. This situation involves marriage. I'm going to leave the tarot cards from Tarot of Love in, until the end there. You have compromise. Breathe. Actually, I'm going to put these down here. And you have hedonist in the reverse position, which is the shadow attribute, pursues pleasure to the detriment of health, indulges at the expense of others. Okay. And let's take a look at your tarot cards. You have the lover's card. Very strong messages already. You have the nine of lightnings, which is the nine of swords. The Prince of Blossoms 
and wholeness, which I believe is the world card. Actually, let me just double check that. So, sorry, number 14 is the temperance card. All right, so pile number two, what I am seeing in your reading is that this potential for new love is either number one, with somebody that you're already with and you're you're married to this person and this is your soulmate and you're fully aware of that, but you're having some issues with creating balance within the relationship. Maybe there's some immaturity, maybe there's some issues uh, or imbalances with your children or there's some stress in the relationship. Maybe they are having a hard time finding balance within themselves and compromising. This could even be leading to drinking or some other kind of hedonistic behavior. The other aspect of this, if this is not somebody that you already are in a relationship with and this is completely brand new love, then I do see that this potential relationship may have some challenges to it. I do feel as though it will ultimately create a sense of balance for you However, it may start out with some challenges. It may start out with some immaturity or some imbalance. Now, I do see that this person is very much in love with you, whether you're with this person now or this is something brand new. This person is very romantic. They are very heartfelt. They are very feeling oriented. So they they can have a tendency to be a little bit not unbalanced, but just very easily swayed by their emotions. They don't have a real good sense of stability when it comes to their feelings and how they act or behave because of those feelings. So they may need to practice a little bit of grounding or self-reflection. They may need to work with you or you with them to create more balance. And this could take some compromise, so you may have to compromise to help this person to find balance within themselves, or you may have to compromise for this person some things within yourself that maybe you have not created balance around as well. So what's being advised here is that you both just take a deep breath, center yourselves, come back into this state of balance so that you can create more wholeness within this relationship through these acts of love. I do see a lot of romance and passion in this relationship, but the problem is that because there's issues with compromising or finding a way to balance these two very powerful energies it's like your your needs and their needs your emotional expression their emotional expression they're very different and so kind of bringing these two things together it does feel like it's a bit of a challenge for you there may be some stress around this but you're trying to at soul level by coming together with this person you're trying to create some healing. So this does feel more like a faded karmic relationship. Now, I don't believe that this is the type of karmic relationship that would just be for the short term because we do have wedding here. But if this is the case where it is a temporary relationship, it is there to teach you balance within yourself. It is there to teach you what you are willing to compromise and also what you are not willing to compromise. It's teaching you how to create more maturity emotionally between you and within you and as well as within them. It's teaching self-control, it's teaching discipline, and it's teaching balance, really. It's, it's a bit of trial and error. And so that may be what causes some of this stress in the Nine of Lightnings, the Nine of Swords. But ultimately, it's, it's helping to create overall soul growth and harmony. Now, if this is a, the type of karmic soulmate relationship that does go the distance, i.e. you do end up getting married, you do end up spending your life together, then the karma will be cleared through creating balance, through having that inner peace and that inner balance that allows that compromise within the relationship to honor your own needs while at the same time being able to honor your partner's needs. Yeah, in your reading, I just see a lot of passion, but trying to balance that with practicality because too much of anything can become a bad thing. Too much passion can become overwhelming. Too much food can, you know, 
lead to issues. Too much alcohol can lead to issues. You know, too much anything is not a good thing. So this relationship is really here to teach you balance and moderation. With the temperance card here, speaking of wholeness, I do see that this is what will create growth. This is what will create the healing, which allows you to transcend these limiting patterns of restriction or lack of self-discipline or excess in some degree. So whether it's excess of emotions or excess of behavioral patterns that lead to other negative things, I do see that ultimately this relationship and its trial and error aspects, if governed by patience and the fortitude to work together through this energy of compromise, then it can be effective and it can be very long lasting and healthy. I think it is important to note, though, that this type of relationship can be the type that is very fast burning. And if this is a karmic style relationship that's not meant to last forever, you know, karma is meant to be resolved. Some certain levels of soulmates we will incarnate with and we will play out that karma until we've learned the lesson or until we've achieved the goal or until we've realized that we don't want to repeat that mistake anymore and then we move on. Other soulmate relationships that hold karma help us to learn a, a higher soul lesson and once we've resolved that with that person, we can actually have an easier relationship. So again, they keep bringing me back to it's almost like there are these two groups within this one group. And so for some of you, this is going to be a temporary karmic relationship and the wedding card is actually referring to the relationship from the past. So you may have been married in a past life and there was a lot of imbalance and so that created karmic dynamics which need to be resolved in this lifetime. For others of you, this is going to be the other side of it where you've signed up for this relationship at soul level with the intention for both of you to come in and learn to create balance, learn to be patient with one another, learn to honor your passion while at the same time tempering that with the the balance and moderation that longevity really necessitates. So that will actually be able to help you clear the karma and replace those patterns with ones that are much more balanced and harmonious, which in turn will allow this relationship to be much longer lasting and more stable. I do see for some of you that this this person may be initially a little bit non-committal. It feels like they come in very romantic, very passionate, but they actually may have a hard time settling down. This could be part of the hedonistic behavior. It's like they, they have a hard time regulating themselves or limiting themselves in any way. It's like they just want to be free. They're a very free spirit. They don't restrict themselves. And being a free spirit is a, is a good thing in some degrees, but without any limitation or any self-restriction, um, without any boundaries rather, I should say, then it becomes disempowering in the larger scale. So this is where this person is having a little bit of a hard time and coming forward with a little bit of an immature energy initially. This may be what causes you stress. Uh, this may be also why they are doing this type of behaviors because they're unbalanced in that sense and so they have stress and they're trying to avoid it by seeking out these pleasure filled experiences in life whether it's food or alcohol or romance or sex or something else right so they're they're moving through the world trying to navigate it to the best of their ability but they haven't really developed into this very high level maturity that, for example, we saw in pile number one. So high level maturity in this case representing the King of Cups. So the Prince of Blossoms is still a very young energy and it, it does need to it does need some time, which is why I think temperance is here. Again, that repetition of, of compromise and patience and persistence is something that we're seeing throughout your reading. There is uh, a time and a place for growth of each individual and Every person grows and develops in their own time. So I do see that this individual, this person, whether it's male or female, is just in the beginning stages of that growth, irrelevant of their physical age. In this lifetime, they're learning to, to become a little bit more balanced, a little bit more self-discipline. Yeah, and I see that with the wedding card as well here. Like These two people, they look pretty young to be getting married. I mean... 
this picture even it even looks older so that was probably more normal back then to get married in your late teens early 20s but you know in this day and age in 2023 we don't really do that that much anymore I'm, I'm sure that some people still do and that's totally fine but it's much more normal now to see people getting married later in life so I do see that this this is speaking again to this very young energy it's like it's immature again irrespective of age and this person may have a hard time committing because of that it's like almost you know if you can look at these people's faces the girl here the bride looks a little bit um concerned she's almost giving him the side eye like are you gonna run away and he's standing there very stock still looking almost rigid um as though he's under the gun <laughs> you know like he doesn't really feel comfortable doing this getting married but he feels like he needs to or he's being pressured into it or something like that so this is kind of the sense that i'm getting from this this new love it's it's as though this person is not really mature enough yet to get married or to understand what that will entail or what that will require from them and so again if you want to pursue this relationship it is going to take compromise it is going to test your patience it is going to maybe even cause some mental stress for you however there will be passion there will be romance there will eventually if this team can work together and that does also mean that they need to pull their weight, it's not all on you, then there can be wholeness here, there can be balance that's achieved, there can be unity that comes from this, but it will be a test, it will be a challenge. And that is why there may be some hesitation there, or there may be um, some fear around getting into this relationship or committing on both sides, because at soul level, you're both kind of unconsciously aware that this is what this relationship is going to entail, especially for them. So on your side, I feel like you're much more willing to compromise. You're much more willing to stay grounded and be balanced and to enter into this relationship with the intention of balance and working together towards a greater goal. Um, but I do see that this other person may experience resistance around that because again unconsciously they realize that that soul push to be in this relationship is going to kind of force them to evolve it's going to test or challenge them i wouldn't say force actually let me take that back there it's going to test and challenge them or give them the opportunity to step out of some of their overindulgences some of their dysfunctional expressions of behavior that have been creating a lack of balance in their life they're very used to just doing things their way when they want to, how they want to. So that's what's kind of contributed to this immature type of energy because if they aren't given any restrictions and they're just allowed to do whatever they want all the time, they don't ever learn, especially if this was the case from a young age, they never really learned to self-moderate. They never really learned or were told no. Um, so it's not like a... It's, I mean, the energy that I'm getting is a little bit spoiled from this person. Like they are a little bit... Um, just more like indulged, like maybe they had a very permissive mother or father that allowed them to just do whatever they wanted or gave them whatever they wanted. And because of that, they've almost come to expect that. They've almost come to um, feel entitled to that level of freedom or to that level of indulgence. And again, this is why it's time for them to mature their soul is calling them to something greater soul is calling them to experience or be challenged by this discipline to get to or work towards something that's greater so if they do truly love you which i do see that they do they're going to need to evolve they're going to need to meet you where you need them to be um, they need to learn to commit they need to learn to discipline themselves they need to learn to belay um instant gratification for working towards a goal that will pay off in the long run you know they have to compromise on what it is that they are used to just getting and be willing to put in the effort to actually build something more long-standing yep it's definitely going to challenge them <laughs> And the number 29 is really standing out to me here. So again, that's kind of a young age. Even even getting married in your 20s is still, I think, young. I mean, 
<laughs> I'm 34 and I'm unmarried. So I just I just feel like in this modern age, we don't need to be married off at like 14 years old because, you know, there's a dowry and we can't live under our own parents' roof anymore. It's like there's more progression in equality. And so the whole con- the whole institution of marriage has become more of a free will thing than it used to be in the past generations. You know, 100 years ago, it was much more about stability and making sure that you were going to have a home a lot of people got married because, yes, because of love, but also because women were looking for stability and somebody who was going to take care of them. And then the men were looking for somebody who was going to run the household. And that's just not how things are done in most cases anymore. And if it is, it's done by that way by free will, by by choice, based on the individual and their needs and wants. So because this generation is much more liberated... I think that this person is young. They could be in their 20s and maybe you're older or maybe you're that age as well, but you are more mature. (laughs) Um, So yeah, same message coming through. I was looking to see if there was any additional messages for you here and I don't see any coming from the cards. They're just kind of repeating the same thing that we've been talking about this whole time about lack of discipline, needing to compromise to find balance, being a little immature, being very passionate, very loving, but at the same time not having that be regulated or balanced and so that causing stress. So that's really the main message, but I do want to get some clarifiers. So I'm going to grab the love tarot. I'm just going to give it a quick shuffle. Okay. So what does pile number two need to know? All right, let's take these about this person. You have the king of rods. Destiny, which is the wheel of fortune. The seekers. And the five of lightnings. Okay. I feel like there's one more. This one. Entang- Oops. Entanglement. Okay. So this is interesting. This is adding another layer. So yeah, pile number two. I do see that this is somebody that you are destined to meet. This is a, a type of a, a soul contract, whether it's negative or positive. Again, it's going to vary by the situation, but this is something that's destined. The reason being either to clear the karma or to learn this lesson. I mean, they're very similar, but negative karma is learning uh, a lesson of what you've done dysfunctionally in the past, whereas soul level contracts that are not related to past life negative karma are still about learning a lesson, but it's more of a free will sort of expression of the soul rather than correcting a mistake that's been made in the past. So the King of Wands here is actually, I think, a good sign that this person has the capacity to mature. However, again, even the King of Wands, although they are mature, they are um, definitely more mature than the Prince of, of Cups here or the Prince of Blossoms. I do see that this person is still very focused on the pleasures of life. They're very focused on maybe even very, very passionate and creative. Maybe they're passionate about their hobbies and maybe they're passionate about what they are, you know, excited about or what they're learning or something like that. Maybe it's a type of business that they have, but it's very like they just go a little bit too hard. You know, they put in too much effort. They might in the excess, they might be a workaholic or in the other direction, they might be somebody who has a lot of dreams and ideas, but doesn't put them into action. So this could really go either way, but it is destined and it is kind of catalyzing both of you to seek something within that's going to help create this balance here. So I'm, the, the seekers card is the hermit. So it, it's like you two are kind of being called to look within through this container of the relationship to find out how to create balance. So as each individual creates balance within themselves, it adds to the balance of the relationship. However, again, we see challenging swords energy here. The five of lightnings is is conflict, um, disagreements, ego battles, and entanglement here as well. 
That's the um, devil card, I believe. So this is something that there can be disempowering choices being made. There can be disagreements. There can be stress that's caused by this either by the dynamic where this person is choosing things that are actively disempowering to them and they are, they're having a hard time kind of breaking out of those cycles. They're having a hard time liberating themselves and that can be frustrating for you or both of you and because of that there's, there's conflict. Having disagreements, having arguments, having fights and needing to like sit down and talk it out, breathe first so that you be, you know, you calm down, you're not as triggered and then you can come and start to discuss how to resolve this or how to compromise so that a mutually beneficial solution can be achieved. So yeah, this relationship does feel like a challenge, but there are very good positive qualities to it. And I, I do believe that even if something is destined or, or fated to appear in our life, we always have free will choice about how we interact with that. So if, say, for example, this is a fated relationship that you find very challenging and it's causing you to struggle on your own journey, well, then you can always choose to opt out. You can always choose to no longer participate in that dynamic because even a, even a higher level choice that you set at soul level can still be amended or changed or diverted in some way by your conscious awareness in the now. So that could mean changing the behavioral patterns of the interactions within this relationship, or it could just be meaning that you're wanting to get out of the relationship entirely, go off on your own, seek some healing for yourself, and then at a time that you're, you've both grown and matured, possibly come back together or continue off on your own separate journeys. Okay, let me get clarifiers on the wedding card. So can I get a specific guidance around the wedding? Oh, you have the mother. This lends an entirely new layer to this. So when it comes to that wedding, it, it, it's like, it almost feels like a shotgun wedding. Like maybe this is somebody that you had to get married to because you were pregnant. That could be what this immature energy is, both that maybe perhaps this person wasn't ready to get married, but they felt like they were forced into it. Or... Um, you have a child together and this child is young and this child really causes you to have some issues between each other. Maybe you have different parenting styles. Maybe one of you is more permissive and one of you is a little bit more um, authoritative. And so there's some conflict there and there's disharmony needing to, again, compromise. Yeah, I still do feel as though this person is immature themselves anyway, though. It doesn't mean they're a bad person. Immaturity is not a dictator of good or bad. You can be an immature person and still have a good heart. You can, you can be an immature person who just hasn't had the opportunity to mature in the way that will bring you to that level of wisdom that another person has, and that's totally fine. So there's nothing against this person for being a little immature, maybe just a little bit emotionally unregulated in that sense. But I do see that this, it, it, it may even become like you need to mother this person because they have this very younger energy. So if this is not like an actual marriage wedding situation where it was shotgun and because you were pregnant or something like that, then I see this really being about you kind of needing to mother this person in a way, which by the way, that's not a good dynamic to be in. Um, if you feel like you're being called into that mother role, just stop yourself right there and remind yourself that this person is an adult, that this person has free will, and this is a divine being that can make their own choices. So really stepping back out of that mothering role, because I did put this mother card right on top of breathe, which is kind of like just taking a step back, focusing on yourself, grounding yourself back into the present moment. I feel like if you become triggered and you try to control the situation by mothering this person, it's actually going to make it worse because that's what caused the problem in the first place. I do feel like this person was, um, I, I don't mean like uh, over mothered, but I feel like this person was just treated in a very permissive way where they were allowed to do whatever they wanted. And because of that, they really didn't get a lot of discipline. It, or structure, maybe not even discipline. They just didn't have a lot of structure or 
the capacity or the not capacity the um or the opportunity to learn self-regulation and self-discipline possibly because the mother just gave them everything that they wanted okay i'm gonna take a look at hedonist can we get a clarifier for the hedonist card princess of blossoms that is interesting you have the prince of blossoms and the princess of blossoms okay so i and especially that since we asked about the hedonist card and this is the the clarifier yeah this person might be a bit of a player <laughs> um they might be initially when you meet them someone who was very non-committal and really just goes for like an easy lay oh my god i hate to say that um <laughs> Okay, if this doesn't resonate and, and this is not what you want, then just then this reading is just letting you know that if this person comes into your life, then that's a big red flag. And now you have the guidance that you can either avoid that situation or deal with it with intentional awareness if you do choose of your own free will to enter into this partnership. Because I do see that this person had a hard time, uh, again, regulating themselves when it came to, their, came to their pleasure. So they may have just kind of like chased after people for the pleasure of connection or to have those emotional needs met. But again, they're going for very immature people. So if you are a, a mature person and you're with this, you're with this individual, it's not necessarily going to be an energetic match but again it was destined that you were supposed to come together with this person so that it would cause you to go inward and seek balance and catalyze this growth for the both of you for the better um, whatever the end result happens to be okay i will get a clarifier for compromise the call this is judgment yep so this is going to require you to use your judgment, high level judgment. It's going to call you to listen to your soul when it comes to what you're willing to compromise on and what you are not willing to compromise on and finding a way to balance that if possible. And if not, then again, exiting this relationship and allowing individual growth to occur if that's what's needed. There is potential for rebirth here if this person is willing to mature, if this person is willing and of their own free will, not being forced, but if of their own free will, this person is willing to let go of their previous immaturity and pleasure seeking and lack of commitment, lack of discipline, if they are willing to step up not because you give them an ultimatum or because you force them to or because you try to teach them how to do it. They have to do it completely on their own. If that is the case and if they choose to do that completely of their own free will, then they, they can go through a rebirth that may allow you to, to eventually commit to a higher level relationship together. Because I do see a lot of passion. I do see a lot of love here. It's just that immature energy, that, that entitlement and that lack of discipline from this individual, it, it just makes it very hard. It makes it very hard for you to, to have your needs met and for them to feel as though they're having their needs met because they expect like way too much and you're just you're aware that that's too much and so that's something you're not willing to compromise on that's something you're trying to get them to to wise up to to mature to to have a little bit more perspective on okay i feel like there is one more card that wants to come through and i didn't really ask a question i think it's this one here princess of nuggets yeah again we have young energy so to me this is feeling like it's an investment on a long road if this is a, if this is a new partner that you haven't met yet and you do decide to go into this just go in knowing that this will be an investment meaning that you may have to kind of give a lot to get a little bit back um, or you may have to give a lot in the beginning which you may not see any return on for quite a long time but there is a potential that is a bit of a 
a risk, but there is a potential for this to pay off later. But again, this will require patience from you and from them. This will require um, sticking to your boundaries, making sure that you're not overextending yourself, that you're not mothering this person, that you are not losing yourself in some of this conflict or strife and instead focusing on the balance that you can create within you because that's what's going to energetically assist them in doing the same for themselves but again it's all free will destiny can bring you together but this person has to choose for themselves whether they are willing to grow up wow okay oh my god the bottom of the deck the fools and it's interesting because they're walking in different directions here. So you may you may come together, have some conflict, try to work it out, try to compromise, realize that you're both not really satisfied with the relationship the way it is, and then move in different directions. But again, this may come back together later, or this may just be exactly what you needed to resolve, to learn to balance within yourself and to start out on something new. The fool is... Uh, a new beginning energy and it's starting something fresh it's going off on a new journey of discovery and exploration it is inherently it also a very immature energy because the fool is the very beginning of a journey so it's it's not that it's immature in a derogatory sense it's just inexperienced and because it lacks experience it seeks to go out seekers it seeks to go out and explore and experience and that experience is what provides the wisdom that turns into personal growth and maturity really interesting reading pile number two not what i was expecting but you know i go into these readings never really expecting any one set of things and anything can happen so take what resonates leave the rest and i am wishing you a lot of good discernment and balance and uh, boundaries <laughs> if you come into contact with this person or this relationship shows up all right many blessings to you guys and if you're interested in clearing any karma for yourself or creating more balance within you i do have transformational soul services available and you can check out at my website the link is in the description box below this video all right guys and we will see you in the next reading bye all right hi pile number three Let's go ahead and take a look at your cards to see what new love potentials may be coming in for you at this time. You have forgiving and learning. As you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moments. And I'm going to use the Tarot of Love cards for after we look at the oracle. Oh yeah, you guys have two of the Wisdom of the Oracle cards. You have Happy Happy. You have Chop Wood. You have Poet. The light attribute is expresses soul insights in symbolic language. The shadow attribute is turns a lyrical gift or sorry turns a lyric gift to navigate or dis turns a lyric gift to negative or destructive effect now this is not something that um is relevant to this reading first of all because i stumbled on my words several times several times trying to read that and second of all because it came up in the upright position so i take the reverse uh, reversal of the card as the shadow attribute and you have you are ready okay pile number three let's take a look at your tarot cards you have the king of lightnings which is the king of swords you have transformation which is the death card you have the world card as well oh my gosh yeah this is huge big 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 energy and you have two of lightnings the two of swords all right so pile number three the first thing that i am seeing here for you is that through your healing through creating happiness for yourself you are forgiving any patterns of the past that have put you in relationships with people that you did not see eye to eye with people that you perhaps felt like you had to do a lot of hard work 
just to see even a semblance of tranquility in this relationship or in those relationships, I should say. But it looks like you're really coming full circle here. You're really coming back into um, a position that you started out at, but from a much higher vantage point or a much greater perspective because of the experience that you've gained. I do see this as a big progression for you. This forgiving and learning is allowing you to release and heal the past, which is bringing you to this transformation moment in the death card here. It's like you're being reborn. You're freeing yourself from any of those limiting patterns or programs or relationship dynamics that were causing issues in the past and you're no longer going to repeat them because you're focusing on your happiness which is the key to your success you are focusing on uplifting yourself i see a lot of raising of the frequency raising of your emotional um capacity to hold this high frequency love which is no longer burdened by fears of the past or regret or any drama that used to exist in your old relationships so i do see that you are coming full circle with the world card here it's like you are finishing up this learning stage this phase of your relationship patterns and because of that spirit is quite literally saying you're ready you're ready, pile number three. You might feel like you're not on some level, although you were drawn to this reading. So perhaps you do, at some conscious level, desire to have this relationship potential come in. So let's take a look at this person. So I do see this person in your reading, although a lot of this focus is on you. Whereas in pile two and pile one, we were really focusing on the person themselves and what they are bringing to the table. In your reading pile number three, we're really focusing on your story, your progression, your hero's arc, and all of the learning and growth and transformation that has occurred there that has led you to this point of being able to welcome in this new love. So I do see this new love here whether it's male or female, this person is very intellectual, they're very high-minded, and they have a, a sense of clarity that surpasses many other people of their same age group or of their same sort of designation in life is what I just heard. So they're a poet, they're a broad thinker, they free their mind, they're very open-minded and intellectual as well. So again, being able to use words in a creative and very heartfelt way is sort of something that defines this person. They are very loving, they are very sensitive and a deep feeler, but at the same time, very rational, very logical, and very um, balanced in the mental realm. Again, that high level thinking is something that I'm getting from them. They're not afraid to do the work as well. They're not afraid to put in the effort. When they see a problem, they're going to be looking for the solution. So this is the type of person that they are. They're very creative. And yet at the same time, it's like, they're, they're not opposed to doing any of the mundane tasks in life. Like they will reserve the creative expression from their heart for a designated time and place. And then when it's time to do the quote unquote work, they will just do that. And it's interesting because what they're showing me is almost like this person does the work. And then it's like when they're doing something mundane is when they're getting the inspiration to creatively express something about that or a realization that that task brought them about something completely unrelated. So this person is definitely a deep thinker, even when they're doing very mundane tasks like running errands or doing groceries or something like that. They're always thinking, they're always musing on the bigger questions of life. This is like a philosopher type energy that I'm getting from this person. Very, most likely very spiritually minded as well. And if they're not specifically into spirituality it's more like this philosophy that they have they're they're very studious they're grand thinkers they're always looking for more information and they're studying the greats so they might have read i just heard the word homer in my head and i'm pretty sure that's a book um ulysses so they're like very much into the classics they are looking for more information about the world and about mythology and about narrative. So this is probably somebody who's an avid reader, uh, most likely somebody who is 
probably a writer as well, especially since we have the poet card here, but they may not be explicitly a writer. They may just be a very good communicator because the king of lightnings is the king of swords, which is air sign energy, um, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, and the air signs do have a tendency to be very eloquent, very well-spoken, usually very good at communicating verbally or through written word. So this is something that I'm seeing with this individual for you, this potential new love or this soulmate connection. And it really does come together at the end of this journey for you. So it's like, as soon as you feel like you've come to the end point and you can't go any further and you've come full circle and you have all these realizations and you feel that sense of wholeness within yourself because you've unlocked the key to your own happiness on your own, independently, this person comes in. This person is attracted. This person is magnetized to you. And I see that where before in the past you may have had oppositional thinking with people because you were up here and they were down there. With this person, you see eye to eye. You're on the same level because they're up there with you. Very interesting. Okay, so now they're calling me to get some clarifier cards. So let's take a look. Uh, yeah, that's, this one just really wants to pop out. <laughs> look at that, Princess of Lightnings. So yes, you guys are both in this energy of communication, being on the same page. Both of you have the same sort of mindset there may be differences in your your history or your perspective to some degrees of course you're not the same person but you have generally speaking the same type of open-minded thoughtful um, highly intellectual type of, uh, of expression or natural state of being okay what else does pile number three need to know about this new potential love uh, relationship or soulmate that's coming in. The magician. Okay, so it's interesting because in my head I was asking, you know, when will they meet this person? And I should have said it out loud, uh, but I was going to actually wait until after. But now that I see the card, I realize that this is in regard to that. So the magician. The magician is manifestation. It is a new beginning. It is you putting in the intention and the balance that you've created through this internal happiness to manifest this person, to bring them into your reality. Again, they're showing me the um boop. they're showing me these two infinity symbols here and here so these to me in this reading are speaking about manifestation it's like you're drawing each other in because you're you're quantumly entangled already because it's an energetic match it's a frequency match and so that energy is just very naturally drawn towards itself because that's essentially what that is it's an energy frequency match and so it pulls in i do see that in terms of timing the magician card is something that happens usually fairly quickly i mean this depends on the amount of action that you are putting into it the magician card does hinge on that sort of contingency if you are taking action if you are getting out there if you are actively manifesting this then it will show up actually quite quickly probably qu more quickly than you actually expect <laughs> or maybe even feel ready for because I think that's why we also had the you're ready card um, you might feel like you're not quite ready they're also drawing my attention to the fact that this is the king of lightnings and this is the princess so you might feel like you're not quite on their level which is interesting it's usually maybe you're used to it being the other way around where the people you're with are not on your level and now you feel like you're not on this person's level the cards keep reiterating though that you are ready pile number three you are ready and the more that you can kind of accept this and put this into action through your embodied frequency keeping yourself in a state of independence being very happy taking care of the the mundane tasks in your life while not losing that poetic heart that grand thinker that um, beautiful soul within you this is going to manifest much more quickly so actually on that note let's get some more information about the timing of this because that's what I'm feeling drawn to ask about uh, is these two and this one okay so we have the eight of nuggets 
Yeah, this is kind of confirming what I was saying there with the magician card. This is, if you put in the effort, if you put in the work, this is going to produce results. And this is also speaking to the chop wood energy. So the eight of pentacles or the eight of nuggets in this deck is about uh, putting in the effort. It's about sitting down and practicing or studying or learning something. It is chopping the wood, right? It's like you have to, if you want to build a fire and you want to enjoy the heat of that fire, you actually have to go out and chop down a tree and chop the wood into small pieces and then build a fire and then light it. So it's like the work that goes in to the preparation of what it is that you want to enjoy. And because you've done that, you do get to enjoy it. Oh my gosh, you also have the Ten of Nuggets, which is the Ten of Pentacles. And we see the world being held in your hands, pile number three. And these two storks, again, coming together. So we can see these two souls, you and your ideal soulmate coming together. Um, and I'm noticing that, again, the, in the world here, this is both speaking to the cyclical nature of your journey and the turning of time as well. Um, oh, we did ask about time. They're showing me the world and the number one. Okay, so the world here, um, when I think of the world, it takes 365 days for the world to turn completely in one full cycle. And because we have the magician here, which is the number one, I would venture a guess to say that for some of you, maybe not all of you, but for some of you, this is going to be manifesting in quite literally 365 days from now. So mark this on your calendar. What day is it today? Whatever day you happen to be watching this, because it's a timeless reading. Uh, but take into account 365 days from now, this is most likely going to be manifesting in some way or the beginning stages of it will manifest and this is going to be something that's really long lasting because the ten of nuggets is a legacy card it is that you have put in the work you have built the foundation and it is stable it is long lasting and it will go the distance so this is the type of relationship that can last for years if not decades wow you guys pile number three amazing. Now you do have also the five of rods, the five of wands. And usually this is a card of conflict, but look at the look at the imagery here. Do you see conflict? Because I don't. I see unification. I see you walking the path together and anything that sort of comes up to challenge you or block your way, it's like you just breeze right through it. You're able to choose the path that suits you best. And I'm also seeing here that you may have converged together off of multiple pathways. So it's as though you're coming from different directions, but ultimately you meet together on this same pathway that takes you forward into the future. So this person may be coming from a different path than you, a different walk of life. Um, again, I keep getting that message of they have very different life experience from you you've lived very different lives however your mindset is very similar and your frequency is a match and so that is what counts really interesting all right what other question should i ask here for pile number three so we have timing and it's usually it's coming up as about 365 days or one year um this is also going to give you the opportunity to continue focusing on building on what you need to be doing. So this is going to give you the prerequisite knowledge and skills that you're going to still be building over the next year. Um, so by this time next year, you will have come full circle in some way. And you're sort of at the end stages of this cycle anyway, but it's still going to take another a little bit of time. For some of you, it may not be an entire year. For some of you, it could be a month because the magician can be very quick. Again, if you're putting in that work, if you are doing that, and that's also the aligned timing, because again, we have to factor in divine timing. Yes, we have some part to play in that with our actions, with manifestation and with our frequency, but divine timing is always something that we have to consider as well. That's the way the universe is ordered and synchronized to make sure that everything goes off without a hitch. Okay, so what, yes, let's focus on what you can do in the interim period before this person presents in your life or before you, you meet this person. What does pile number three need to be focusing on? 
the two of blossoms. This is absolutely beautiful. This is the two of cups energy. And I actually pulled this for myself as the card of the day today that I'm happening to be doing this reading. Um, so the two of cups is all about mutual reciprocal types of relationships. And it's not always about love, although this is my significator for the soulmate card. Um, however, it can be about give and receive with your friends, with your family, um, any relationship really where there's love and there's care and it's all about reciprocity so it's about getting as much as you're giving and giving as much as you're getting and I do see that here with the happy happy card because the happy in its singular form could be applying to you and then happy happy could be applying to you and the other person or these other people in your life so as you are happy they are happy and as they are happy you are happy so practicing creating happiness between yourself and your friends, family, loved ones, this is actually going to help to propel you further and do this work energetically that's going to help you come into alignment with this person. Okay, interesting. They are asking me to get a card from the Romance Angels deck. Okay. Let me just clear the energy here, give it a quick shuffle because I didn't use this one uh, for a couple of days. Just going to clear the energy. Okay, now let's take a look for pile number three, mm, two. I have this one and the one off the top here. Okay. Getting to know each other as you reveal your innermost selves to each other, your bond deepens. And you have chemistry. There's a strong magnetic attraction here. That's that's what I was picking up on. There's a strong magnetic attraction here that's going to bring you two together with those infinity symbols. Uh, I also see that this is going to be a little bit of a process of getting to know each other. And I also see this in relation to the happy, happy card as you revealing your innermost self to you, <laughs> like getting to know yourself better coming into a, a healthier relationship dynamic with yourself. And also, as we saw with the Two of Cups here, the people in your life that are already close to you. So the more that you can be your authentic self, the more that you can reveal your innermost expression in its most pure form, that's when those bonds are going to deepen and this may attract magnetize in this person um, either around the time that you're doing that or afterwards yeah I see that when you do come together obviously there's going to be a lot of chemistry because you're on the same wavelength it's like your your thought patterns are matching up you're you're the same frequency and so you can just talk for hours I'm seeing you like spending a long time together just getting to know each other and talking about things and going really deep into these almost like esoteric topics or very worldly topics. So you're not just sitting there looking for information about each other. Like, do you like dogs? Do you like going for walks? What's your favorite food? It's deeper than that. It's like, what do you think about this concept? And do you believe in this? Or what do you think about that? It's very... It's very broad type of getting to know each other because you're not just focusing on the facts about this person. You're focusing on the beliefs. You're focusing on the thought patterns and the, the way of thinking, which is what's important to this person. And apparently it's important to you as well. And this is where the chemistry comes in. It's like you're attracted to this person. I just heard in my head, um, what is that word? Sapiosexual, I believe. I think that's what it is. So that's essentially when you're attracted to someone's intelligence. So say, for example, you came into contact with somebody who was not less intelligent, but maybe not as broad-minded as you or who isn't as interested in sort of very out there or intellectual concepts, it might not be as stimulating for you and therefore it wouldn't be as satisfying. And so you wouldn't be as attracted to that person. So a sapiosexual is just someone who is very attracted to and satisfied by intellectual conversations with others. And so being attracted to people who are intellectuals and broad thinkers and very open-minded is something that I'm seeing here <laughs> for both of you. This goes both ways because they feel the same way as you do um, and they see you as somebody very intellectual and at the same time very um, 
very alluring. It's like there's some mystery about you that they're trying to unlock. It's like you are this this story that they're trying to understand the deeper meaning behind. And so they just want to like, it's a page turner is what I just heard in my head. And they're showing me in my mind, like them reading the book furiously, going through like can't put it down. <laughs> and it's like it becomes their favorite book. And they just want to keep rereading it and rereading it and rereading it. It's like they never get tired of it. Um, you know, that's how you know you love something is you can watch it or read it or connect with that person forever and never get tired of it. It's like it always just gets better. For me, that is the movie Pride and Prejudice, <laughs> the one with Kira Knightley, that I can watch endlessly forever and never get tired of it. And it just always brings me comfort and it always makes me laugh and it always brings me that warm, fuzzy feeling. And I, it's just like, it's my forever movie. And, I, and that's what I feel with this person. And that's why I see the Ten of Nuggets here, the Ten of Pentacles. This is your forever person because they they'll never get tired of you because you're their favorite story. <laughs> oh my God, pile number three. My heart is just so full for you. This is so exciting. Okay, we're not done yet. Um, yep, we're, get, we're getting all the other decks coming into this reading today. They want me to have um, a look at this deck as well, which is the angel answers. So if you are asking a yes or no question, this is the deck that it may come up in. So let's take a look and see. Oh, wow. You have take action. That's what the magician card was talking about as well. That's what the eight of pentacles and the chop wood is, is referring to as well. So the take action card is asking you to um, to start doing these things, start implementing this prerequisite work or start putting yourself out there, uh, start creating balance within your existing relationships because this is going to help you to connect to this person. You may even meet them through a friend or at a social event or something like that because um, this is about taking action. And so it's not a passive type of relationship or connection. This is something that is going to come in when you are doing something. Uh, it, yeah, because that's what you're manifesting. It's like you're focusing on something that you're doing for yourself that makes you happy. And then because you've taken action and you've put in this other work behind the scenes to get yourself more into a balanced state, feeling good about your personal transformation and evolution, and then bam, this person is presented. Let's see what else for pile number three and this potential soulmate relationship. They're really making us wait, huh? Look at this. I think this has a message in it too. It's like patience, 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 patience. Because it, it is going to take a bit of time. Some of you is going to be that 365 days that we were seeing. So uh, having patience with the process by enjoying the process is what I'm hearing here. And I do like shuffling, so I enjoy that process. <laughs> no need to worry, pile three. Oh, look at that. Because it was like, it's taking so long. And uh, why isn't the card coming out? Or why isn't this relationship showing up? No need to worry. This is all unfolding in exactly the right timing in exactly the right way. So just focus on what you can do now. Just focus on focus on you, really, because when they say take action here, they don't mean like go out seeking this person in the energy of desperation. That's actually going to drive them away energetically. That's going to repel. So what you want to do is not worry about this. Just focus on yourself. Focus on getting to know yourself. Focus on forgiving and learning. Um, maybe the, maybe you meet someone in a learning environment as well. So this could be a course that you go to or a library or um, a school environment or something like that and because this person is an intellectual that's somewhere that they frequent and this is somewhere that you're taking action toward because you maybe you're looking for information about how to do some of these other things maybe it's to do with your work maybe it's to do with your business it's like you're learning something and you're studying that's what the eight of nuggets is talking about as well so that really helps you to transform yourself which puts you in the frequency of this relationship this is really, really cool. Um, let me see what else wants to come up for pile number three. 
So I was trying to see if there was another deck that had more messages for you, but they're kind of giving me like a no, not that one, no, not that one. So, but I do feel like there's more information here. So let me just take a minute to look at the cards and receive that information for you. And I'll be back in a second. Okay, I see it. I see the message now. Uh, so I do see this person presenting you with something. Uh, and I do think that this something that they're presenting you with is knowledge. So this, this person could be a teacher or somebody in a position of uh, success uh, that is wanting to provide or share this information. And you, of course, being on this path of learning um, are presenting in that environment. I also see that this person might be somebody who is of, of a celebrated rank uh, because they're showing me the laurel on the door behind this person in uniform. And so it does feel like this person is very successful. They have a, a, like a title or a rank or something like that. So they could be a professor or they could be, um, yeah, I just got shivers when I said professor. So for some of you, this is a professor. Um, for others of you, this is somebody who who does have kind of like a, a job title of some description that does give them a sort of rank. Um, and it may seem like a very successful or high ranking position. And that's why you may feel as though you are maybe a little bit uh, out of their league. <laughs> Because that's what we were seeing there with the, the the knight, or sorry, the king of lightnings and the princess of lightnings. And that's exactly what I'm seeing here as well. It's like this guy is very well to do. He's very respected in society. He's very successful, victorious. Um, he's exalted in that sense. And he's kind of looking at this person who's just being very like, oh, look at me, you know, like kind of... Um, saucy and a little bit like less serious or less intellectual whereas this person here looks very intellectual uh and so i think she's kind of looking at him like oh is he interested in her is he interested in that girl really like she's just very vain and all about herself i i figured you know somebody of his status would be more discerning and want somebody a little bit more um practical or intellectual or in you know intelligent in this way and it's funny because he's kind of looking at her like what is she doing <laughs> So you might think that he's interested in somebody else initially, but um, actually he's not. He's he's very much interested in getting to know you, but because you may feel like you're not good enough or less than, or maybe he's out of your reach or something like that, it's like you don't initially try and go after him. But I do see that he, or I mean they, if you're, if you're a male, this is a female. If you're a female, this is a male. If you're in a heterosexual relationship if it's if it's anything else then it's just the opposite sex or the opposite partner i should say <laughs> so no no gender conformity biases here okay so whatever this relationship happens to look like but i'm always going to use the more traditional male female dynamic because that's just more widely um applicable okay so i do see this person going after you and you kind of needing to um let your guard down a little bit because I feel like you are a little bit hesitant almost, not because you're not interested in them, but because you feel as though this person's kind of out of your league, but they're not. They, they want to teach you. They see the intelligence in you. You may not be as advanced as they are in some areas, but that's where they're coming in to help to guide you and you are going to benefit and grow and learn so much from this person, so much from this person. And you know what? It's interesting. I'm getting a, an additional message coming through here that for some of you, this will be an actual teacher or it will be, be a, a business partner. So it may not be romantic, um, but I do feel a lot of chemistry and attraction and romance in general. So for most of you, this is going to be a romantic relationship that is very longstanding and um very supportive and mutually satisfying but for some of you for just a few of you this person is not necessarily a romantic partner they are actually meant to be a teacher they're meant to be a guide like a real life human guide for you 
to support your healing, to support your growth, to support your evolution. They're going to help you to transform. And I think that the romantic aspect of, of those um, of this relationship for the others is going to do that too. So it's kind of the same thing. It's just, is this person a soulmate that you have romance with? Or is this person a soulmate that you um, are meant to learn something from? So the more that you can open up your mind, the more that you can contemplate some of the higher perspectives of life, like existential musing, the more that you are going to see things from that higher perspective and become happier because of it, because you're not looking at that pessimistic worldview or you're not focusing on the negative things, you're focusing on the higher-minded ideals, the morality, the ethics, the philosophies, the mythos, the, the deeper meanings, and also providing or creating that for yourself. So pile number three, what I really see from your reading here and from this person is that to come into contact with them, to come into this relationship, whatever it happens to be, it really is about you continuing to learn, you continuing to take action toward your learning and growth as you embody that frequency of happiness and satisfaction and fulfillment through the ideals that you are integrating and understanding at a deeper level, so you will attract this individual and the two of you will come together either in this working or learning dynamic or in this love relationship or both. So keep your eyes open to the information, the signs, the symbols, um, the knowledge that is wanting to come through for you and allow it to lead you in the direction that you will feel the nudge to take action in. Beautiful messages for this new love potential pile number three. So have patience. There's no need to worry. Uh, all is in divine order. So relax, trust, and just enjoy the process of focusing on yourself and your growth. All right, guys, that is what I see for you for this new love potential coming in for you. If you are wanting to do some one-on-one -on -one work to learn some stuff about you at soul level or to transform through energetic healing, I have many, many powerful services that I do one-on-one -on -one, and you can find the information and the pricing to those at the link to my website in the description box below this video. So thank you so much for liking this video and subscribing to the channel. If if you resonated and you would like to see more and I'm looking forward to doing more readings for you and connecting with your beautiful energy. We will see you in the next reading. Bye!